It's my first time in the States. Actually, I dreamed of going to the States from when I was like seven years old, you know, and uh, you could win a trip to America with a local Disney magazine. I never made that, but uh, I bought it every, every week because of that. So uh, it's taken a while to get here, but, uh, but I'm very happy to be here at last. My name is Jesper Fink Jensen. I'm from uh, Denmark in a small uh, town, uh, a bit of a, a distance from Copenhagen. And I work as an organist and a music educator. I teach mostly adult education. My name is Nathalie Bonai. I was born in San Francisco and I was raised in Montreal. I'm a violinist and composer and, and I'm now in the planning of moving to LA. Well, I became interested in music because my mother was a music teacher at school and uh, my father was a jazz clarinetist. So music has always been a bit of my upbringing. I got interested in music when I was four. Uh, my mother brought me to this concert of young violinists and I was so impressed. So I asked her after, oh, could I please try? So that's how I got started. I'm not very much into the serialism or things that don't touch me. I know there's a lot of, of contemporary techniques of composing and I have to say that to me it's very hard because I feel it's very mathematical. I always need to feel something through the music. So if, if I feel it's more a puzzle than an emotion, it doesn't really suit me. I have quite a lot of different uh, musical influences. It depends on which instruments I'm playing and, and, and it can get me quite confused because I, in church I work as a classical organist and I feel perhaps close to Bach and uh, Vidor and, and classical names like that. But when I want to play electric guitar it's more like uh, Eddie Van Halen and Steve Vai and stuff like that. So it, it depends on the situation, but I, I wish I could pin it down to one influence because it, it makes me quite confused, you know. I don't know who I am, musically speaking, after all these years. When I started, my first major influence was uh, Yehudi Menuhin. And then later on, when I explored other kinds of music, it just went from Jean-Luc Ponty to uh, Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan and all these Indians uh, <laughs> playing music. I just love the rhythms. I also like all the hybrid scores, like Diego Stocco is just an idol. He just plays with sand and burning pianos and stuff like that. And it's like a new way of thinking of music, which is beyond the square box, basically. Later on, when I was on tour, I got interested in uh, arrangement through Berkeley Online. And as I went along doing a lot of courses online, I really found out how much passion I had for composition. And that's how I ended up doing the whole master's certificate in film and television orchestration. Well, I discovered Berkeley Online just by Googling or whatever. And uh, I was like 44 at that point. And thought if I'm ever going to learn to orchestrate and be better at writing classical music or film music, then it had to be now, you know. So since I'm working full time, it was uh, it's a great option to be able to study online. My process for writing music uh, depends on the project. I never know what's going to come out of it, but after experimenting, that's how I think I get to that deep place that actually inspires me to write the music. My process for writing a piece is uh, in fact, I usually hear it from my inner ear and then write down the theme and the main form of the piece. It always starts with a lot of exploring. I'm not thinking of chords, just thinking of emotion when I want to translate through music and then that just goes on and on. <laughs> that, the first part can take a while, but once I get that, then it seems like the rest kind of flows. So uh, the general plan for the piece is finished uh, quite quickly and perhaps when I'm asleep and you know just wake up and write something but I've done a lot of transcriptions so it's fairly easy for me to write down what I'm hearing. I definitely like silence a lot because then I can better hear what I'm imagining and that's why I like uh, living in the country. Well, I live in this village, uh, which is called Cape Flinder, where nothing is happening, basically. Uh, but that's the, the beauty of it, you know. Uh, and that's why I thought that it should have its own piece of music, because nothing has ever been written about Flinder, and it's out in the woods, close to the local lake and stuff like that. As it is now, my composition starts out with a slow presentation of the main theme, like a pastoral setting, and then the whole thing sets off, like if the sun gets up and you know you got the sheep jumping around, and you know in, in the summer. But then it's 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 actually a, more like a, a dance theme, the main theme of, of this sonata form. And then comes the second theme, which is more like a chorale theme, 
which I had written uh, previously because it was used in my Orchestration One project, and I, I knew I would, would want to use the two uh, pieces together. And then, uh, of course, the main theme comes back. And then there's a middle section, which is Fugato, you know, it's based on the principles uh, of writing a, a fugue. And then it sort of gets back to the main theme, and then in sonata form it's pretty obvious that you have to return the second theme in the main key, and, uh, and then there's an ending. So the whole thing was pretty much set out because I knew I wanted to write in, in that form. The most interesting thing was, in fact, how you could orchestrate the different parts. You know? For instance, to try to make each voice stand out in the middle section where it's forgot, so you have to hear many voices uh, at once as opposed to in the ending where it's sort of supposed to be just a bit chaotic before the, the grand finale, you know, so... Um, and you can achieve that by using a certain orchestration in certain places. It was a great experience to hear my own music because uh, it's not something you imagine would, would ever happen because... Uh, I mean, you sit at home and, and work at the laptop and you synthesize the voices and you think it's, it's, it's just incredible. So you feel a bit blown away and it's like it's not really happening to you. <laughs> Hearing my performance live was just incredible. It was um, another one of those rare moments where I actually get to hear the music that I've composed with live players and it's such a rare opportunity so it was very touching to see all those students perform it. This piece was composed for two reasons. It was the last project for the Orchestration 2 class I was taking with Ben Newhouse and I had a screenplay to write to. So the screenplay was a scene which was the forbidden love of the woman for the other brother but at during that day, she was supposed to be marrying another, you know, the, the brother. And um, so she ran off to the forest with her loved one. So the piece starts in the forest. That's why the woodwinds and, you know, this kind of whispering in the forest. And then there's the first love theme. And there's like a little retreat because we're not supposed to be doing this. And then the second love is just more intense. And then they get caught by the, the mad brother who is like waiting for his wife to be. Um, so he comes in and just decides to kill his brother. Um, so that's where the stabbing part, uh, the fight part, uh, starts. And then at the end, they actually kill each other, and she is right in the middle. She sees her loved one die, she watches him die in front of her while his other brother is also dying, so she remains the only survivor of this tragedy. The best tip I can give to anybody who wants to compose and have their pieces performed, I think is just always follow your heart and work hard as hell. Um, really. Um, there's something that I heard on Facebook from Steven Spielberg also that really inspires me. He says, listen to that whisper. And I think that is just so great because whatever your heart is saying, it's not going to cry it out loud. It's going to whisper it in your ear. And that little voice that you hear, you have to listen to it. You have to believe in that. You have to really, really believe. But that means that if you believe, you have to be up and honor that belief. So you have to work really, really hard.